Bitcoin investors are once again extremely greedy, not according to me, but according to the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, to which I say we're always greedy, guys. That's why we're here. That's why we're here, because we love money. But Bitcoin, while looking like it was ready to consolidate, is now popping once again, continuing up. This asset has absolutely no chill. We're going to talk about that. A whole bunch of dinosaur coins that also seem to be popping off and all the news is driving markets today. You don't want to miss it. Let's go. Let's go. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel and gently put your head on your keyboard, take a nap, and hit the like button while napping with your face. I want you to face nap the like button. But yeah, you got to hit the like button because if you don't hit the like button, then I won't be a popular YouTuber. It's science. Everybody knows that it's true. That's dope. That's dope, as Nikki Page says. Yeah, morning dopes for Michael That's Steven. Dope. That's dope. That's right, guys. So what's happening, people? Hope you're all having a wonderful morning. Wolf Pack, thank you for showing up. You know that this is one of two live streams I will have today. This afternoon is the world famous Chartapalooza. World famous like every cup of coffee and slice of pizza in New York City, according to the advertisement on the front of the establishment. World famous, best cup of coffee, best piece of pizza in New York City. But yeah, we're going to do Chartapalooza. Uh, subscribers to the Wolf Den newsletter make their requests, and I am their chart slave and make it happen, guys. Drew Drew I would like you know that he's going to chart his pants this afternoon. Don't chart in your pants, buddy. You don't want to do that. So listen, let's uh, let's dig in. Let's do it. Let's do it. And at the end, I have a special treat, which I don't usually do in the mornings. I'm just going to take a look at a few charts that I've been watching that look kind of good. Dinosaur coins, because that's the trend. We'll talk about it. First mover, Asia. Bitcoin enters extreme greed territory, all coins rally. Bitcoin volume has increased the past two days, but remains well below its mid-October high. Yeah, well, we were going up like we were doubling in mid-October. It was up. It, it was uh, October. No surprise there. But as you can see, when they wrote this, Bitcoin was 67,293. It's trading around 68,000 now. But most notably, they came up here and they said, hey, meanwhile, the Bitcoin fear and greed index, which entered extreme greed territory on Tuesday, was at the highest level since October 21st which preceded a sharp sell-off in Bitcoin. So what does that mean for us? Here it is. Here's the fear and greed index. By the way, we were extremely greedy yesterday. Then we consolidated, and now we are only greedy. First of all, to be very clear, I don't think that this is an indicator that you can use in a vacuum, right? You can't just look at this. But if it's in confluence with a key level of resistance or support, and you're getting the vibe on crypto Twitter that people are extremely euphoric, perhaps it's time for a bit of a retrace. But that does not mean that every time we hit extreme greed, you should sell. I mean, listen, we all know the Warren Buffett quotes, right? I mean, uh, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Sure, that makes sense. He also said there's no comparison between fear and greed. Fear is instant, pervasive, and intense. Greed is slower. Fear hits. You know, fear hits like they... like like the drums in, uh, in, in Shook Ones. Fear hits, says Warren Buffett. But yeah, that's the thing here, right? Fear tends to, tends to hit much harder. Greed tends, tends to take a lot longer to play out. People can continue FOMOing while there's greed and, and extreme greed for a very, very long time. Now, listen, in the newsletter this morning, I wrote that it looked like Bitcoin was ready to sort of consolidate, chill for a bit. There was some potential bearish divergence with RSI on the daily uh, not that I think it's going to drop very far. I just thought it would chill. And then, of course, as it tends to do, and as I said, is likely because I said Bitcoin going to do whatever it wants, the honey badger, it went up. It went up. It went up a bit. But I am not concerned with the greed here. I think that a big part of what goes into the fear and greed index is obviously that's not accounted for is all the new people that are finally coming in, hearing about Bitcoin and buying more Oh, and by the way, in case you missed it, CPI was 6.2%. We just today had an announcement that inflation, surprisingly, was higher than expected. So Bitcoin went up. Bitcoin went up. There's a fundamental reason that it's rising. So do not fear greed on the fear and greed index. Let's take a look at the Bitcoin chart or the Bitcoin chart, as uh, Drew Fied would probably call it. We're at 68,307. 
It looks, I don't know if we hit it, but man, we were just about 69K all day at some point uh, in the last uh, few hours. But I said this morning, look, we had this sort of uh, spinning top indecisive candle here, but it was after a break. After this massive daily candle, almost a Marbozu, as I talked about, where you have the close at the highs and the open at the lows. This is one of the most bullish candles we've ever had that you could have on a daily. Breaking an all-time high, breaking another key resistance, both in one candle and closing almost at the highs. Well, yeah, of course, you're going to get a retest of 67,000. We dropped below, even closed slightly below. But now you can see this was a doji this morning. We were like under 67,000. As you can see, we're starting to see a push here now on the daily. With another bullish daily close, we should just absolutely continue to rip and continue up. Worst case scenario to me is we kind of drop back down to maybe like 64, retest it as support and head back up. But everything here looking bullish in my eyes. Bollinger Bands, Bollinger Bands, Bollinger Bands. You guys saw me tweeting with John Bollinger about this. He agreed with my take that I've been having this whole time that Bollinger Bands were looking extremely bullish. Well, look, we broke above the bands. This was the tightest the bands have been this entire year. That means extreme volatility coming. We were trading generally in the middle or above the line, meaning it should be to the upside after this move up. Well, now we got out above the bands and finding support at the upper band. Let's look at last December, I think was the, yeah. You can see what it generally happens when this happens. When you break above the band, you generally basically you see it expanding to the upside and you ride along that resistance. So that's what I'm expecting here from Bitcoin. I think that it's going to be pretty much up only with moments of consolidation. Good news is alts have actually been reacting pretty well to that. On to the next story. Coinbase shares tumble as Q3 revenues fall well short of estimates. Shares of the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the U.S. fell sharply after the company missed revenue and earnings expectations and trading volume fell compared to the previous quarter. I love that they say that it missed expectations and was not as good as the second quarter when literally at Q2 earnings, Coinbase said Q3 will be below Q2 and we will see a drop. And that is what we expect because crypto trading is seasonal and we just had the biggest bull run in history. So to me, this is an irrational dip and you buy it, right? Because what do we know? Q3, July, August, September, down months. Bitcoin was so boring. We reported this. There was no volume. September was awful. And then October hit. Then October hit. And on day one of October, we saw a full reversal to the upside, right? Bitcoin absolutely ripping. So what does that tell us? That tells us that Q4 earnings, October, November, December, are going to extremely now outpace Q3. So when the market reacts irrationally to information that should have been priced in, what do you do? You buy the dip. And this is a big dip. I will be buying more Coinbase stock. I've bought it all the way down. Right now, it's actually at the price where I first bought it, 320 on that first fateful day at the lows. Right around here. So here you go. Massive dip with a massive gap. I would say try to bid between here and 300-ish. Try to catch a test here, support on the way up. This may take a while. I would keep buying the dip if it keeps happening because we know for a fact what the volumes already are in Q4 and what Bitcoin price has done. This is like, to me, one of the most obvious, listen, no guarantees here. Bitcoin could go down, but this is like, looks like one of the most obvious trades in the history of obvious trades in my mind. Moving on to rich people who are doing rich people things. NFT artist Beeple sells latest work for $29 million at auction. It's not an NFT, though. This is actually digital art. It's a, I believe, seven-foot statue of human one, physical sculpture that does come with an NFT, but the buyer actually bought this physical sculpture. They can put it in their house. If you guys haven't, yeah, the, you know, it's not quite $69 million, but hey, $29 billion isn't too bad. Well, here's what it looks like if you guys have not seen it, right? Let's uh, take a look at that. Here we go. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. So it's basically this uh, astronaut first man walking through dystopian landscapes, uh, $30 million for Beeple. But that's not really the whole story. And listen, I love Beeple. I'm a huge fan of Beeple. Had Beeple on the podcast. I'm also a huge fan of another NFT artist, a very good friend. I was at his wedding recently. Uh, and we'll be heading to Art Basel to hang out with him, Micah Johnson, who has a character called Aku. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Aku, but tell me if this looks familiar. This is not my words. This is an actual controversy that's happening. I've seen people talking about it. Aku fans 
are pretty upset with people at the moment. Pretty upset with people at the moment. This was at uh, Complex Con, but the Aku has been a character. I own all the NFTs. It's been uh, been hyped for quite a while. And well, a lot of people are saying that uh, people stole the concept from Aku. I can't say that that is the case or is not the case, but they walk the same. They're both astronauts. They're both wearing helmets. Kind of up to you guys to decide what you think about that. But really, really interesting how similar the two of them look. I mean, it's pretty, pretty, pretty clear, I would say, when you look at them. I, there's a lot of Akus, but uh, yeah, definitely would love to hear your guys' opinion. Do you think that these look similar so much so that it was likely a copy? Or do you think that people had a completely separate concept for a walking astronaut and, uh, and that uh, he came up with this completely by himself? I don't know the answer. Up to you guys to determine. As I mentioned, though, if you're into a coup, a coup world in Miami, you come hang out with me, too. I'll be there from December 2nd to 4th. Uh, I'm just going down to hang out. Yeah, look, Victoria says, when you showed it, I thought it was a coup. Yeah, it's very similar. Whether intentional or not, it's obviously extremely similar. It's obviously extremely similar. So this is an event at Art Basel in Miami, the biggest art show in the world. I'm going down for this, but it's presented by FTX. This thing looks absolutely crazy. I'm just going because uh, Emmy uh, and I are friends with Micah. She works with him. But I mean, Kalani is performing. Pusha T did the uh, clothing and they are spending literally millions of dollars to create this like uh, environment. It's, I mean, it's bananas. It's bananas. So I'm going to go down there for that going to be uh amazing yeah people are saying yeah well shit i want to go to miami now yeah well there's going to be a lot of nft activity in art basel in fact i would argue there's probably gonna be more nft things than physical art from what i'm seeing it's pretty pretty crazy speaking of nfts speaking of nfts uh yeah good artists borrow great artists steal <laughs> there you go yeah i mean i think it looks very similar obviously and aku ain't new aku ain't new Anyways, Gary Vee, a real NFT winter market pullback is coming. The V Friends creator anticipates a bear market ahead, but still says that NFTs are going to be here for the rest of everybody's life. Yeah, no shit. Uh, yeah, he had the, basically the same sentiment that I share with you all of the time. I'm trying to find the quote here. But he said, look, the conversation is about to get very interesting when we hit an NFT winter because there's way too much short-term greed and supply and demand issues. In other words... Most of the beloved NFT projects that are being shilled to death by influencers and celebrities all over Twitter are actually just cash grabs that will be worth nothing down the road. Wow, what a revelation. But Gary Vee loves NFTs. It's interesting to, for him to say, guys, chill. Like there's a NFT winter coming. There's going to be a bear market. We all know that NFTs are going to be here for the rest of our lives, as he said, as art as tokenizing everything and ability to transfer value from one person to another. But most of the stuff that people are buying and hyping right now is garbage and will be worth absolutely nothing, zero, zilch, nada in the future. That's why I always say, I always say, it's a, it's a milkerism. My dad actually is the one who told me this. My dad first said, listen, if you're going to buy an art, Art, never buy it as an investment. Only buy it because you love it. Any NFT you buy, you should be buying because you're willing to look at it and covet it for the rest of your life, not because you view it as an investment or a flip. Because then you're going to be very disappointed when it inevitably goes to zero, as most art does. As most art does. Anyways, let's keep it moving. The big news. Apple CEO Tim Cook reveals that he owns some cryptocurrency. Tell us how much, bro. We know you own cryptocurrency. You're the CEO of Apple. Smart CEOs own cryptocurrency. But let's see what he had to say. Bitcoin or Ethereum, would you play around with this? I, I do, yeah. I think it's reasonable to own it as a, as a part of a diversified portfolio. And I'm not giving anybody uh, investment advice, by the way. <laughs> when, when did you get interested in it? Uh, I've been interested in it for a while. And uh, I've, you know, been researching it and, and, and so forth. And so uh, I think it's interesting. Yeah, I think it's interesting, too. I think it's interesting. I happen to think that it's interesting. It's no, no coincidence that seemingly every single tech billionaire has exposure to crypto low-key behind the scenes, right? I mean, the CEOs of all the biggest com companies in tech are either 
have said they're invested in it or building things in the space and you know they're invested in it. And even a lot of Wall Street billionaires are invested in it while the rest of them go, poo, poo, not dollars. Oh, oh, oh my yacht, Hamptons. We know that Tim Cook understands and invests in cryptocurrency, but what about Apple? Nah, dog, <laughs> nah, dog. Immediately when this came out, people were like, Apple Pay. Apple Pay is going to invest in crypto. They're going to integrate everything. It's going to be the greatest system in the world. No, not in the plans, guys. I'm sorry. Tim Cook was very, very, very quick to say, yo, bro, uh, I love this stuff. I'm invested in it. But no, Apple's not touching it right now. Not touching it right now at all. So don't get too excited about that. Uh, STV, Stupid TV says Tim bought half pizza token. I don't even know if that's a real token, but he probably did. Uh, yeah, not financial advice, guys, uh, obviously. And so I'm just kind of looking through your comments over here. Uh, yeah, Tim Apple. Trump called him Tim Apple. Tim Apple, he should legally change his name to Tim Apple, Tim Cook, right? Steve Jobs is the only Apple CEO who could just uh, have a last name. Otherwise, you just got to be Tim Apple. You got to be Tim Apple. Uh, so here we go. Continuing on from Tim Apple and Apple not, not doing what we want Apple to do. They will one day. They'll come along. Digital currency is likely to be legal tender, Central Bank says. This is like the most, I, I, I actually included this from Bloomberg because it's the most non-news story news story ever. If a central bank creates a digital currency, they're talking about CBDCs here. Doesn't it seem obvious that they would be considered legal tender? It's literally the bank creating the digital money. So like, is the United States going to make a digital dollar and then be like, not? Legal tender makes absolutely no sense, but of course they're going to be legal tender. And of course, central bank digital currencies are coming. They're coming for you. They're coming for your family. They're coming for your friends. Central bank digital currencies coming for you. Listen, everything is going digital. It's obvious that uh, this is a, the central bank's wet dream. They can control the money supply. They want your taxes. Take them out of your wallet. No control. Want to make it rain some money on you? They want to pull a DJ Khaled at 11 in Miami? Just make it rain, throw in hundreds? They just do that right into your wallet. You literally see the rain on the app, and it's like, ooh, and then uh, money appears in your thing. That part's cool, but the part that's not cool is you'll have no privacy, and they'll be able to do whatever they want with your money, and life is going to suck, and we'll live in a dystopian future with Big Brother watching. But besides that, guys, rain. They can just make it rain, Right? But the good news, I think, in all of that is when these central bank digital currencies likely become legal tender is that everyone's going to get a digital wallet. They're going to learn how to use one. Even the boomers who are like, I can't do the Bitcoins because of the wallets. That's how boomers talk. They're going to have to. And then they're going to go, wait, this sucks. And they're going to start using Bitcoin. That's what I think is going to happen. Maybe uh, I'm a little bit too maxi with that opinion. But yeah. What do you think will happen if Biden changes Fed, they're going to print money. The guys, this has nothing to do with Biden, has nothing to do with Trump. Both parties are irresponsible with money and will continue to print because they have no other option to fight the natural, natural forces of deflation. They will print and print and print. Neither party is responsible. They are flip sides of the same coin. Politics suck. Politicians suck. When you realize that and stop paying attention and worry about yourself and the people that you love and humanity rather than the politics and which side your life will become exponentially better. Thank you for attending my TED Talk. AMC weighs own cryptocurrency and nod to meme investors. Of course they are. Of course they are because AMC in the middle of a, in the middle of a global pandemic when nobody wanted to go to the movies, well, their stock went up 2,000% because of Reddit and Wall Street bets and a bunch of people trading it like a meme. And it's amazing. So why wouldn't they create a coin, roll with the meme, continue doing what's working, and have a coin that people can use? They've already adopted other cryptocurrencies for payments. It's a natural step for there to be an AMC coin. Reddit co-founder and Solana Ventures to invest $100 million in decentralized social media. No surprises here. Why are there no surprises here? Because just yesterday, Sam Bankman Fried, who I believe is the biggest investor in Solana, went 
on stage at this conference with his huge head on like a movie screen right behind the little people. I showed it to you. Huge head, little people. Huge head, little people. Right? That's dope. They did that. He said the future of social media is decentralized. And then coincidentally, the next day, we have Alexis Ohanian, the founder of Reddit and the CEO of Solana, talking about a $100 million venture fund to invest in decentralized, blockchain-based social media. Are you surprised? Are you surprised? And we're going to find out also, obviously, that Alameda had a huge piece of this, that FTX is involved because that's what's going to happen, right? That is absolutely what is going to happen. This is what's going to happen in the decentralized social media space. We had DeFi, we had NFTs. Is the next season going to be decentralized social media season? Probably, probably is. So I would keep an eye out for projects that all of these people are investing in. Now, guys, as promised, I've been saying this for days. I was ahead of the trend. Once again, trendsetter by like a couple of days. But just last week, just last week, I started talking about dinosaur coins. In the newsletter, I said, plug your nose, hold your breath, swallow that disgusting medicine and take a look at Litecoin. An ADA. It is less of a dinosaur coin, but I still consider it one. It was a large cap that's been around for a long time. I said, take a look at these coins. The Bitcoin pairs are all sitting on support with massive bullish divergences, right? That's what I said. That's what I said. And I'll show you right now, actually. Let me pull up the ADA Bitcoin chart. I don't have it here, but we'll later. here's the ADA Bitcoin chart. Massive bullish divergence right at a major key support. Let's take a look at the Litecoin Bitcoin chart. Because I shared these last week. I shared them also, I believe, on here. Litecoin, massive bullish divergence at the all-time low on Binance on the Bitcoin pair, unless you count this wick that went to zero, which we don't count. Okay, so obviously they've popped. This is the best setup there is in the world. Massive fear, people saying it's dead, at support, at the lows, bullish divergence, largely oversold. Well, now we obviously, I've been sharing this ADA setup. We have the breakout of this wedge. And now if you see right here, we have a perfect retest. Perfect retest. This should be heading to $2.47. Take a look at Litecoin. Yeah, well, that was down here when we were talking about it. If you were buying it on the Bitcoin pair, now we have an absolute monster breakout in Litecoin. Everybody talking about it. Everybody talking about it. Uh, yeah, but we are coming into a key area of uh, supply here. This should be a lot of resistance, but man, if this thing keeps running, we got much higher targets in mind. If you can catch a retest of 236, I would look at that. But let's take, since we've been looking at those, obviously we got to look at Ethereum. We know what Ethereum has been doing. Dinosaur. Dinosaur, right? Retest of the all-time high, making another new all-time high today. But let's look at some other ones. Talk about plugging your nose and buy. I bought, I, I, I. I posted XRP today in the newsletter. Posted it down here when we had this bull flag around $1.12, and now it's broken out of this macro resistance and retested it two candles in a row of support. XRP, and what's the target? $1.96. This is how we started talking about, I think, maybe, but if we weren't, this is how we should have been talking about the movie Better Off Dead, where the paper boy is chasing John Cusack, and he says this. I want my $2. I want my $2. Well, XRP Army wants their $2. $1.31 right now, and you have a target of $1.96 on this breakout. I want my $2. That's dope. That's right. I want my $2. Let's take a look at EOS. Been posting this in the newsletter, strangely. Break of the trading range, retest as support after breaking out of this resistance in blue on increased volume. Looking good. Let's take a look at some other dinosaurs. I haven't even looked at these, to be honest. So maybe they'll look bad. I don't know. I just opened them right before. TRX. Well, yeah, TRX, we have sort of, uh, we have higher lows here. We need to make a higher high. But TRX, if it breaks uh, 12.3, 12, 12 cents, point cents, this is what you're looking for on TRX. This is the trade you want if you're going to be in it, right? You want to break and retest. TRX looking positive here, already up. Already up uh, pretty, pretty big, 10, 15, 16%. XMR, kind of boring ranging. If you're going to look at XMR, like I said, I didn't look at these. You're looking for something like this, and those are your entries. 
Ethereum Classic breaking out through resistance after holding support. We were looking at this. Not much volume, but this should be heading to $176. That's absurd, but that would be the target of this move, right? Back up to here. And finally, NEO. We looked at this, I think, at Chartapalooza the other day, and I said, this looks like it's going to pop. Here you go. Macro resistance, local, local resistance with a kind of a little inverse head and shoulders, breaking both. I said, this is a confluence of support if it can break through and popping. This should be heading up to, uh, we could call that one target at $73. I would give you another target around $66. That's just a preview of the excitement you can get if you show up to my Chartapalooza today at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. Chartapalooza. 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 If you guys haven't been there, you got to get there. You guys got to get there. But yeah, guys, this is the cycle. Bitcoin consolidates. Large caps consolidate. Mid caps. Small caps. Back to Bitcoin. Dominance goes up. Bitcoin wrecks shit. Back into large caps, back down. It's happened in the past and is likely to happen again. Guys, Victoria, she knows about Chartapalooza. She is a Chartapalooza. No, that's wrong. You're not that. We, we can't call you guys Chartapaloozers, right? That makes me a Chartapalooza. I don't want to be a loser. Nobody wants to be a loser here. Anyways, come to Chartapalooza, guys. Come hang out. Like I said, make requests in the newsletter and then uh, you'll watch Chartapalooza and then. That's right, guys. So I am done here for now, but I will be back in three and a half hours for Tartapalooza. Until then, don't forget to show up. Don't forget to show up. Be there. I want to see every single one of you there. If you're not there, we're not friends anymore. Bye. That's dope.